Okay. This is delete once again. It is 2 a.m. in the morning. And I just come from a hip hop rap show with uh, a guy who sang with LL Cool J. I don't remember his name. Gucci, Gucci something. Gucci rapper, I think, yeah. Him and uh, uh, man, this other guy who died, his son was there. Old dirty bastard, his son, Junior, I think, was there. And they all look like, yeah, him, he looked just like his daddy. Let me tell you something else, interesting show tonight. Because two and on the wide, it ain't nothing like where I come from. You know, back in the Bahamas, we got the rake and sweep thing going on, and that's why I am here. I don't know why I push my music on this tour. The Bahamas for the ADL. But watching them fellas operate and looking at the support and the love that the people who were there, that they generated this, you know, because most of the guys, they went on stage and they was like, you know, and they was just rapping their heart out and they was like, you know, doing the hip hop thing and and they were just like going, going at it, and they had this, this battle against one another. Like, you know, they had a throwdown, like a rapper, and one rapper here, one rapper here. Then there was a guy in the middle, and he's like, five, four, three, two, one. And you go, you got one minute to rap. And it's like really unique to see. It was really, it was dread to see how they did that compare to how we operate home in the Bahamas that big rig and straight movement, you know, we already got that party thing going on, but it's like everybody was just still, you know, throwing all these signs and, you know, ATL up in the building, you know, they just doing the thing that was like so different. And then like, you know, after they finished the battle of the band, this, this, like, like, this white boy was there, he's like, you know, you, I'm gonna F for this, and he, and he was like, you're I'm gonna F for this, and then like, I'm gonna rap you and I'll hit you up and spit you out and I'll cut you like a surgeon, and I'm gonna F for this and mother that. Then they get the mic to the other guy, and he's like, you were pestling, and you know, you were uh, last macho on my foot with a roach, and, and then when they come upstairs, then they went and take pictures, and he's like, what the hell, you just are trying to kill one another, and you're all taking pictures together, it's like, after all of that violence and verbal abuse against one another, they still had unity, they still have love, and they still had the support for the hip-hop, and then after they finished singing, the people was like, yeah, 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 and then they was like, and that was like really, 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 really interesting. And that was really cool to come all the way down here and watch how they operate on a peanut butter, rye, and banana sandwich. Two o'clock in the morning. This is the real thing when you're on the road. This is what it takes if you have a rich and a star after five star. So the journey. Very, 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 very interesting. Very interesting. ATL tonight. The people supported the rappers, the hip hop, the hip -hop artists. The people support them like mad. Trust me, I was an audience and I just sat back and I asked, watch how your people support your world. So, me from the Bahamas, Stelite, Stelite.com, yeah, Stelite, the Raven Scrape General that I am of the Bahamas. I'm watching the Gucci rapper. He had on a hat just like this. He's the general, all of them are saying, you're the general, and they were saluting them. It was just interesting for me. And that's power, you know, when you get your people supporting you, and they're giving the culture the vitamin that it needs in order for them to run the race that they're running. Because on them stage, them big stage, them, ain't easy to have support. And that's ATL was giving their artists their, even, even down to Complex, with the guy who opened the show. You know, all of them had a level, all of them had a barrier. Then the guy who brought on the... The Virgo dancers, I think it's Virgo, I can't remember what that, but what, what sign he called off. But, you know, he had some dancers, and then he had this lady blowing the flute, and, you know, doo -doo 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 -doo, and then he had this guy in a wheelchair, and he came up and he do his rap, and one fellow was beating box, you know, <coughs> all of that and stuff, you know, I can't really do it because I got food in my mouth, but all that was, I guess, totally cool. So when I go back home in the Bahamas, my, my game, I just step my game up more. You know, Rake and Scrape already gone viral. ATL is Rake and Scrape Town. ATL is Rake and Scrape Town. Yes, sir. Everybody know how think they do not. No, hold on, bring it back. Everybody think they know how to haul and shake. But what friends still bust the Rake and Scrape? Watch it. Master Roach. 
Kong style, 2 in the morning, we just do this all the while. Mm-hmm. Banana and mm-hmm. Uh, uh, AT, yeah. I'm a funny. Studio duration, sweep down with I'm out. Hollywood kid, but you waken. You waken, my boy. You waken. I've been introduced to everybody tonight, and this is just how you do it. We was not waking by hand. Anyway, I gotta go. I gotta go call my wife. We had a pretty interesting day today. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna start off with the good things. We went to meet the mayor of Atlanta today. He was so nice and he was so down to earth and like, he was just like, he, he's been to the Bahamas and he absolutely loves it there. He stays at Ocean Club and all those other things. Like, he was just really down to earth. I didn't expect that. And he knew a lot about the Bahamas. He even said that Little Chris was in the Bahamas and Little Chris was telling him about, you know, how he's in the Bahamas doing a little concert thing. And I was like, the mayor of Atlanta no Luda? <laughs> you know, I find that to be really cool because he, again, like he knows what what's happening in his country. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, so the mayor of Atlanta thing was awesome. He even gave me like, kind of crystal thing, give me a gift on behalf of, you know, being the Grand Marshal and being a part of the event and all the things that I'm doing. So he gave me a little gift. I should get it to show you guys, huh? No, because how much you want to know what it looks like. Because the leak was already like, I could keep that. Nobody got that for that. But yeah, so we all came home. And I don't know what happened. Africa stopped at the store. She was getting a few things, we came home, we sat down for a few minutes, and then all I heard was something about five personalities. Now, when you hear five different personalities, you can only think of one person that can possibly have five different personalities in this house. Now, I don't know if you guys watched the episode before, but I pretty sure you guys can remember me talking about a blonde drama queen that's an airhead. That sounds pretty close to the one with the five personalities, doesn't it? Yeah? Mm-hmm. That's her. Now, I don't know how many personalities I've seen as yet, but I've seen a few. And every last one is just, just real different. Like, <laughs> like one will be real professional. Like when you on camera, interview beast. The next two minutes, we back to, huh? No, I just need to understand what's happening because, like, if we all don't just get together and say what's going on, then nothing will make sense. I think that was the second one. Like, and then the third one is, I'm just so stressed. And I can't, I can't take all of this on at one time. Like people don't understand, and nobody listens to me. So that's about three out of the five that you mentioned, right? So like, like <laughs> it was just, it was just crazy. Cause it's like, so we just was trying to figure out what's wrong with you, and you admit to having five different personalities. Like you couldn't warn a nigga before you came in the house with five. I don't even think it's five. I think. It's Ten. Maybe, but yo, for somebody of ten different personalities, that's kind of serious. I mean, this is this serious situation that we're dealing with, but that's like extreme. Anyway, 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 anyway. Yeah, over the five differentalities situation, we had a pretty good day. You know, we had jokes. We had a lot of jokes. We had a lot. Of Joe's, especially when we heard about the five different personalities, it was all, like the whole house was just, just, just begging. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, we had a pretty good time. Then we went with we went with Hollywood Kid to this concert. It was like an old school rapper, of course. I don't remember the name because I wasn't even born in the time that these dudes were rapping. So I was standing there like. So, what are we doing? Are we just gonna stand here? Okay. So I stood up the whole night and I'm like, 
this music kind of start because I don't even understand what these dudes are saying. Like, okay, let me just rock like this just to make it seem like I know what they're saying, but I just wait for something good to happen. You know, that kind of rock where you're just like, mm, mm. like you really understand what's happening, but you have no clue. That's how I was, but. Uh, I mean, we had a good time. We had a few jokes out there because, you know, I don't know nothing but old school hip hop. I'm going to be honest. I don't. So it was like, it was really like a. Why am I here? I don't know anything. Like, I'm not even. I'm not even bothered anymore to feel like I'm in this. Um, but, you, you know, it is what it is. It was a day out, it was a night out. And I finally, finally. <laughs> Finally got out of the house. Finally, finally got out of the house. It wasn't as, it wasn't fun at all. But you know, it was out of the house kind of thing. <laughs> Anyways, I think, I think I've covered all of the, all of the festivities for today. No. So I went to get my nails done today, and you know. It's not that far from the house, so I just walked back home, got home, and the five different personalities were here. Now, I don't know which personality it was, but we got home, and she was like, oh, I'm hungry. So I was like, oh, well, you know, the food store is right there, the subway's right there, we can just walk right there. Of course, I didn't want her to drive, because this chick, like, she's like a 12-year-old at driving. Like, it just doesn't make sense to me how you can be in the United States of America. I cannot. Anyway, so I say okay. Get in the car. The AC don't work. Nigga, Atlanta is a hundred and ten degrees at exactly twelve thirty one o'clock. You trying to tell me there's no AC in the car and you don't know what's wrong with it? Of course you don't know what's wrong with it. Of course. Like, why would I even expect you to figure out what's wrong with it? Just, that just doesn't make sense. So okay, we're already burning up in the car, and you gotta go around the whole block. You gotta stop to the bank. You gotta stop to the food store. You gotta. It's a hundred and ten degrees outside. You don't have no AC, but you wanna be all over Atlanta, Georgia. Fair enough. So I'm sitting in the car, melting. Mel melting. Then melting sitting in the front seat. Melting in the front seat. She goes to the bank and it's like an hour because she can't get the money in the machine. Like of course, like of course, why would I expect you to know how to put money in the machine? Why would I anyway. Then we about to drive off and this chick runs up on the side of them. It was like a little island. She rode up on the side of that. She's like, Oh jeez. Like, the island was there. Like, you didn't see it in the road. It's not supposed to move. Like, like don't say, jeez, like, the island is in the wrong. You rolling up. <sighs> you know what? Yeah. So I started, off, I started off my morning a little stressful. I'm a little scared for my life. But all in all, the day, the day was good. The day was good. So I'm about to get some sleep. I'm probably going to wake up to Africa screaming in the morning again. You know, normal routine. His delete is gonna come and ask me for a call, and he's gonna start playing music. It's gonna, just gonna be a whole bunch of noise that like usually wakes me up in the morning, and and you know what? That's okay. That's that's okay. So, peace out. Okay, um, everybody's out. This is actually my second time that everybody's been out, and I've been here, but. They're getting to see the city, they're getting to have fun and all that stuff, and they left me home like one poor little redhead stepchild who sleep underneath the step. But I'm just kidding. Um, truthfully, I prefer to be here at the moment because I just want to make sure the itinerary is tight for Jacksonville. I want to make sure that all of the things are in place and all the rest of it, so I can sacrifice having my fun in order to make sure that everything falls into place accurately because I'm not having a repeat of what occurred with some of the events from last week. You know, I am 
using the term I am trying to confirm until I see it in print in writing in front of me with an official signature. A lot of people think that being a publicist has to do with being stinking Olivia Pope. Carrie Washington plays a character that is not a traditional publicist. We don't lay around with our clients. We don't do this. We don't do that. While everybody else is out there having fun, we are working to make sure that things are in place. While they're just thinking about what they're doing today or this afternoon, we are already planning four days in advance. So right now, um, I've secured the hotel rooms. I've secured the appearances at the nightclubs, the making sure that the VIP drinks are there, making sure that parking is available, ensuring who the guest list is, ensuring the menu for the parties that are being thrown. Um, just got off the phone with some media colleagues down in Jacksonville. I'm so excited to be seeing the people who I work with and, you know, because those are my people. You know, I love them so much at the Florida Star and the Georgia Star. And I'm doing all of that. At the same time, I am also laying out the newspaper for the star. And so I'm basically doing two jobs at one time. And it, it's really it's really a challenge, but if you believe in something strong enough, you can do it. And the good thing about it is I've I'm now on a different sleeping pattern, I believe, than the other housemates at the moment. But um, it's going to get done, and if I may, you know, if you're not going to leave a distinctive impression, then don't do it, you know, so. But um, I've been getting a lot of feedback. Some people have been seeing the interviews and stuff posted, and I'm very appreciative and very humbled because at the end of the day, People will see the blood, sweat, and tears that are poured into it. It's not about having Stelite and Celeste go and stand next to somebody and pose and smile, and then you guys see it, you know. This morning, I'm spending time calling the Tribune and the Guardian and JCN and the Punch and everybody, Freeport News even. Like, I haven't seen the stuff being promoted. I've seen it in the Lutheran. Of course, Robin watch it at the Bahamas Weekly. Yes. Oh, you are such a blessing. I love you, Robin. But, you know, I just now have to make sure that I'm sending and they are printing. I'm sending because the word has to be out there. So, no. Between all of that and it's... <coughs> see, there's my alarm. Yeah. So, between all of that... And this alarm that is annoying everybody in the house because I'm on a schedule. Yeah, we we don't have time to be sleeping with the president of the United States according to scandal and all the rest of that. But um, no, we we it's a hard job. Somebody has to do it. But trust me, when I get in Jacksonville, I think I'm going to take maybe an hour or two to just have some me time. And we're going to see what happens. I'm going to, I'm going to just be excited as best I can because things are falling in place and they are falling in place to a level that I didn't expect, you know, and I'm just so grateful for all the opportunities and, uh, you know, just coming off the phone with some of these people and they're like, yes, by all means, you know, thank you. And it, it's getting me... It's bittersweet because you have all of these American people here. Yay, Bahamas. Go, Bahamas. Rake and scrape. And you have Bahamians who are rolling their eyes and all the rest of it at what we have to offer. But people here are just so excited to embrace it. You know, I mean, and I'm going to go here. Y'all Bahamians, and I could say, I could talk about y'all because I was one of y'all. Nobody else could talk about y'all. But because I'm one of you, I could address me, we, and all of us. Y'all Bahamians, for real, y'all don't treat your own right. Y'all have to wait until people go away and then come back. You really truly think if Sir Sidney Poitier was standing up at the National Art Gallery pitching his career all these years, y'all would have given him credit? No. The man had to be abroad in order for y'all to appreciate and name bridge after him. 
okay? You have people like, and I'm going to get here back to Salit. You have people like Salit, abroad promoting the music that's not the next thing. Y'all ain't even acknowledging him by giving him, well, I can't say it. I, no, I'm not going to say it because I don't know exactly what is happening there. But my point is, as an observant Bahamian, we need to do better in appreciating our own instead of judging them and picking them and talking about all the things they're doing wrong. They is us. We is them. Support Bahamians. Bahamas 40 ATL is not just about Bahamians who are in the city of Atlanta. No, it's so much bigger than that. And I think we all need to stop, drop, and concentrate on promoting each other. And again, I have to thank Atlanta. I have to thank the Caribbean Carnival. I have to thank Mayor um, Mayor Kasim Reed. I have to thank Miss Clara and all the people down at the Florida and the Georgia Star and Auntie Roz and everybody else because... They are taking the Bahamas to the next level. They are making time to accommodate us and treat us like kings and queens and party here, party there, reception dinner here, VIP room there. And when I come through the airport, the only thing I get is a stamp to say I home. Okay? For real. Anyway, God bless y'all. But... Jacksonville, we're ready, we're excited, and I'm going to go back to work because while everybody's out and it's nice and quiet, that's um, the time I can make all my phone calls and at least try to rush this paper out and make sure, but you're going to see how well we received when we hit Jacksonville, and I challenge you, 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 and you with a picky head back there, all of y'all, Bahamians, I'm challenging y'all. When these people get on that plane and they hit Nassau International Airport, known as the Lyndon Pinling International Airport, to be politically correct, I'm expecting some sort of thank you for representing us. I'm expecting some sort of how was your trip? Thank you so much for showcasing us in a beautiful light. I'm expecting more than an eye roll and a cock twist. I'm expecting... A thank you for representing us and showcasing us to the world. Please, do not let these people come over here and return home and you're not giving them the hero's welcome they deserve. Because they deserve that and more. And on that note, I'm going to go back to work. Ah, okay, the lead is here, back in the building. I just come from, um, as you can see, I'm very well groomed. Uh, I can say you did a good job, right? But Mother Sigrid, I ain't gonna lie. I am not gonna lie, right? This dude charged me like seventeen dollars and then he gonna ask me if I need change out of my last twenty dollars I have with six days remaining in the ATL. Well Mother Sigrid and my boy the my DJ he just said that he laughing. <laughs> Y'all can hear him? he laughing, right? Because in the Bahamas, this cost me five dollars, right? Go down town, if you bought five dollars, seventeen dollars. I ain't gonna even cut you though. He uh, he had attempted to go wash my hair face. Could you imagine he did wash my hair? What it would have cost? Seventeen dollars for this. I mean, I might look good. Come on, I know I'm expensive. What are you kidding me? Come on, you're waking with a monster here. I know I'm expensive. I know I look good. I know, I know what's happening. This is not cheap, but. 17 bucks to do this and to do that and then I gave him a 20 bucks which is my last 20 and he asked if I need change don't you have like three dollars for me nigga <laughs> don't you have like three dollars for me so I was like no I don't need no change you know I mean that's my last three dollars I was broke I just let him have it because of the courtesy and I was like shocked that the 17 dollars still had me shock on my left side I didn't know if I was tightened up for like a tack or something because I think I'd say keep the three dollars, keep the tree, you know, because I was in Atlanta, I don't want to hear Papa out with them three dollars. <sighs> I guess that's how it is. When you're in Rome, do what the Romans do. When you're in the ATL, LTA, let the goddamn three dollars go, buddy. So I just gave him the whole 20 bucks. Yeah, all that going in the bill too, that going in the bill. So that 20 bucks, that's like 200 bucks by 100% because I wasn't expecting that. Now I can't buy no food. I'm hungry. I can't buy that day. $20 gone. I'll wash all my clothes. Yeah, then I go on. First of all, we went to this other barber shop. Sports Clips. 
all women are not racial, but they are not my color of my kind. So you can figure it out. <laughs> Stop laughing, mate. <laughs> the lady say, uh, what's your name, please? I don't know. I thought she trying to meet me. I thought she was trying to take a nigga out. Come on, you're like, I can't. I'm not on the market anymore. So I was like, cool. So I gave her my name. Um, okay, uh, would you like to sign up for our, uh, you can do it now for our free uh, platinum haircut or whatever? I said, damn, sweet girl, I don't want no platinum haircut. I need a shave. I got to go beat the mayor of Jacksonville. I don't want nothing platinum. Wait till I go platinum to tell me stuff like that. So, you know, she can... Um, then she asked me for my email address and a, a telephone number. I was like, am I filling out a passport flicking form? I just want to line up. I want you to shake this up right here. You know, we'll be with you in 15 minutes. Sit by, we'll be with you in 15 minutes. 15 minutes, my ass. We in the chaos, my DJ. We get out of we go. <laughs> 15 minutes. You got to be flicking kidding me. So then I get to the brother barbershop. I say, this is what I'm talking about. Just walk in and just get a shave. He still charged me seven him. Oh my Randy Moxie, he charged me seven him. Oh my god, I got him shaved. I got him shaved. Oh my god, I'm so But anyways, I look good. I feel good. Talk to the family today. Because PTC City is flicking, got my phone flicking on, man. And he gave me no service, man. Dang, foolishness and I all the way up in the ATL, you know, pushing the movements for the Bahamas for you. ATL and celebration, and I can't even say this to talk to him in God digging family, man. Anyways, they can scream. See you, smile out. True to the powers of movements, true to the powers of the blessings of the wine.